Okay, in this example, we have the indefinite integral of pi times the sine of pi x. Let's go ahead and try to work through this. So because we have the sine of pi x, we can't just integrate it using the formula, the one that gives us the integral of sine. So we need to get rid of the pi x. And so really we can think of it as the inside piece. So we'll make a u substitution. We'll let u be what's inside the trig function. So we'll let it be equal to pi x. And then now we'll take the derivative. So the derivative of u is du. And then the derivative of x is one. So here, when you differentiate pi x, you just get pi, right? You just get pi, and then you have a dx. And this works out perfectly um, because uh, pi dx is right here. Look at that, it's just perfect. Perfect, perfect. So this is gonna become the integral of. So let's replace the pi dx, let's replace that. That's just gonna be du. So I'll put it over here. And then we have sine of u, sine of u, right? because this piece here is our u. And now when you're integrating sine, um, the way I do it is I try to think backwards. Uh, what's a function whose derivative is gonna give you sine? Well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So this is going to be a negative cosine of u plus our constant of integration, capital C. And you should check your answer always. When you differentiate cosine, you get a negative sign, but you have, you have a, a negative here already, and so it's gonna become a positive sign. Again, the derivative of cosine is negative sign, but the double negative is gonna turn it into a sine function. And so this is equal to minus cosine of u, and u was pi x, and then we still have our constant of integration, capital C. So it's always really, really important to go back to the original variable, which in this case uh, was x.